Hello and welcome to the Games Dev Outpost. In this video, we'll be talking about Niagara and Curves in Unreal 4. So all curves are a dynamic input, but that doesn't mean all variable types can turn into a curve. So for example, if you go to an integer and you go to the dynamic inputs, or if you just type in curve, nothing will show up because you can't turn an integer into a curve. Floats, if we go to initialize particle and say we went to mesh attributes, mesh scale, this is a vector three but we're gonna break this into a vector and we'll put one into the mesh scale for Y and Z. But for X, if we go to the dropdown and we type in curve, we can get a float from curve. And in most of our curve graphs, what we're looking at is on the left, we have a zero to one value. And this is indicating what value it is. One, 1 1.25, three, five, whatever you want. And then zero to one on the bottom side this is indicating over time. The best way you can think about this is a percentage. And in this case, it's a percentage based on the lifetime. Every module and every variable has a little bit of a different impact, but a lot of curves are gonna be based on the lifetime. If you click on these keys, you'll see the time and the value, and you can set those right in here. You can also grab those keys and move them around. You can hit F on the keyboard, and this will frame all of your keys in view. And if you right click on the red line, you can choose add key to curve. Additionally, if you right click on a key, you can change the keys interpolation. You know, is it gonna be smooth or do you wanna break it? And usually when you select one of these, you'll get these blue handles so you can change how that interpolation happens. And then next, if you feel like this window is too small for you, if you click this little curve icon, it'll open up the curves window and it'll show that curve in this window. If this curve icon is turned on for multiple curves, you're gonna see all of those curves appear in here. And we'll come back to that in one second. Next, we have a vector two. And of course, if you click this drop down and you type in curve, you'll get vector 2D from curve. And this graph is pretty much the same, but you're gonna see two curves for two different axes, X and Y in this case. You can hide them or you can lock them so you can't mess with them. And once again, you can turn on the curve icon so you can better see them in the curves window. And like I said before, if you have multiple curve icons turned on, you're gonna see them all show up in the curves window. In your curves window, you also have visibility icons and lock icons. So you can see that these ones are called sprite.size, vector, two curve, dot x, and dot y. So these two relate to this one, and the mesh.scale.float curve relates to the other one that we just looked at. Next up, we have a vector three. So in the scale color, scale RGB, this is a vector three. And if we type in curve, we do vector from curve. This is gonna look just like the other windows, but this time we have three curves. It's kind of self-explanatory after talking about those other ones, but it's worth mentioning. Now this is where things get a little interesting. So in scale color, you can see that there's a scale mode which says RGB and alpha separately. So we have a vector three and then we have a float. So if I revert this so it doesn't have a curve, you can see that it's just the float. And if we look at initialized particle, we also have a vector for RGBA, but this is a vector for color. So in scale color, if we change the scale mode from RGB and alpha separate to RGBA together, and you let it compile. Now we have a vector four. And we click this drop down and we type in curve. We can get vector four from curve. And what you see is that we don't get that curve graph. Instead, we get a curve for colors. So in these graphs, it's a little bit different, a little bit the same. So each one of these tabs represent a color. So on the top, we have RGB. What color is it gonna be? And if we double click on one of these tabs, we get the color picker. So we can change these colors and it's saying on the top, we're gonna to change the color from red to white over time. And in the bottom, this is for the alpha, and it's saying white, fully visible over time to black, not visible at all. In initialize particle with our color, with our vector four color, we click on that drop down, and we type in curve, we'll get color from curve. And you'll see that this looks just the same, curve for color. And of course, one thing I left out is, if you double click, you can place another key. Now, once again, I think it's really important that I mention where you use these curves are really important, in which category you use them are really important, and in which module you use them are really important. So to initialize particle on color, to use a curve doesn't really make any sense. 
because it's not going to update that color. But in something like scale color, it makes complete sense because it's actually going to update over time, specifically over the lifetime of the particle. Now, one last thing to point out before we wrap this up, on any of the curves, you just see this import dropdown. And if you click on that, you may or may not see any assets in there to choose from. But in your content browser, you can make a curve asset for floats, colors, and vectors. So if I minimize this, right click, go to miscellaneous, curve, and you'll see that there's a float, linear color, and vector. We'll make a linear color as an example. We'll just give it a name, CR, whatever you want to call it. Open it up, save it. You should see that these graphs look very similar to the graphs that we've seen before. But we'll save that, come back to our emitter, and on this color curve, we'll click on import, and you can see that that curve shows up right there. So it's a nice feature for reusing curves wherever you might need it. All right, guys, this covers curves in Niagara. If you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks, guys.